Hey going RPG fans, this is going to be a quick update just to let you know what's been going on. I've kind of taken a break making videos, I'm still in the process of making my Falcom history video but the reason why I'm taking a break is because I'm finally playing a game I've waited 14 years to play and I did show it in my Shining Force SOS video and that is Shining Force 3 which comes in not just one but three different scenarios. I absolutely love it. I'm just enjoying it too much. As you can see, I've got it running in the background. When I finish recording this video, I'm getting straight back to playing it. So, I'm incredibly happy. I've just had so much luck this year of playing too many great games like Trails in the Sky and now finally getting to play this. It's been a good year so far. So pretty much throughout the month of June, I'm just going to have one big Shining Force free marathon. And hopefully in the future, when I get a better setup and I can have a computer with a capture card, I can provide footage and do a really big in-depth review. Because they are fantastic. And this was the last game that Camelot made with Sega. Um, as much as they are brilliant games, it kind of broke the two companies apart. And I will get a bit more into that in the review. But... As we all know, it was for the best because Camelot went with Nintendo and made Golden Sun. But like I said, I'll get into that um, in the future. But if you have a Sega Saturn with an action replay card that can play imported Saturn games, definitely pick these up. There are no greater strategy RPGs, maybe except for Fire Emblem, but these are just amazing games. So, the reason why I've been able to finally play it is... I now have a working Saturn. My old Saturn is buggered beyond the repair and will not play any games. The disc won't even spin, which sucks. And I've had my action replay cartridge lost for nearly a year and a half. And I did try to play imported games back then, but because of my Saturn, as it were, just didn't want to run any games. I was kind of heartbroken and then just kind of uh, put that in the closet and gave up on it. And it wasn't only until now that I've tried to you know, put some effort into trying to get a setup that will play import Sega Saturn games. And now that I do, I can now import the entire Japanese Sega Saturn RPG library, which I'm really looking forward to, because there are plenty of great games other than Shining Force 3 to play. So I'm, I'm very happy about that. So other than playing Shining Force 3, I've also been glued to the com computer screen this week because, as you all know, it's E3. And it's a good E3. It's been a quiet E3, but I was very happy for what was being shown um, for 360. Uh, I'm looking forward to The Witcher 2, and that's pretty much it. Uh, I, I probably will get a 360 next year if The Witcher 2 does come out in power because I really want to play that. Uh, Skyrim is coming out. Now, I'm not really big into Elder Scrolls. I play a little bit of Morrowind and a little bit of Oblivion. Um, my dad is a huge Elder Scrolls fan. He plays those games inside and out. You know, and he's really looking forward to Skyrim. But Skyrim actually looks more interesting than the other two games. So I might give that a much larger go than the other two. Square Enix was then showed Final Fantasy 13 2 I'm taking a few steps back from that because I don't want to get myself overhyped about it. I'd rather wait until the game comes out for cheap and play it. And they also announced, and I actually took this as a big surprise because I didn't think this was going to come out, is they're going to translate Dragon Quest Monsters Joker 2 and because of the low sales of the first game, I thought it didn't have a chance of in hell to get translated, so I'm really happy they're going to give that a go, because I actually really like Joker 1. It's a really good Pokemon clone, and I've played a few Pokemon clones, and they're terrible, but as far as they go, Dragon Quest Monsters Joker is probably the best, and I'm really looking forward to playing number 2. NSI, or I should say NIS, Nippon, Nipponichi was there, and they showed screens of Attilia Tutori, which looks really good. I want to get into a Verona before I get hyped up for Tutori, but it has the same similar art style, which looks pretty cool. I really liked it. I saw a screenshot 
uh, a couple of months back with a character and there's a castle in the background and it's all beautiful watermark colors and it just looks so beautiful in terms of graphically. I actually haven't played the games yet so I don't know how they play but I will invest some time to play them soon. What's really interesting is VanillaWare's got two games. Now they didn't show Grand Knight's history for the PSP at this E3, but that looks really cool. But the game they're really promoting right now is a game called Dragon Crown, or Dragon's Crown. And that looks incredible. And the reason why they're promoting that is it's going to be one of the first PS Vita, PS3 compatible games. And it looks really cool. The art style is bizarre. I mean, if you've seen the art style in Own Sphere, um, that was cool. In Dragon's Crown, it's also cool, but just the dimensions of the characters is bizarre. <laughs> Especially the lady fighter. Anyway, that's pretty much it. There's not too much to talk about. I absolutely love the name PS Vita. I think it's a cool name. A lot of people are dogging it, but I, I like it. The only thing I was kind of um, disappointed about is they didn't go into the um, the software of what they're going to use other than just download. They are pushing download incredibly hard even though there's a demand from the importing collecting community to have a tangible game. And I heard a few months ago they want to put the games on memory cards or it's been called a NPV card and I hope that's true. I hope they have a format where we're able to buy it and I hope it's not region locked. I hope it's region free so I can import the games like I do with PSP and DS because I'm still cheesed off about the free DS and its region locking. Speaking of Nintendo, they, I love Nintendo. Every time they do a conference it's probably the best conference. Uh, last year was amazing and this year was pretty cool. I personally, I like the Wii U. Uh, I, I'm not cheesed off by the name. A lot of people hate the name, but I like it. I love the controller. I loved the games they showed, like the little mini shuriken game and the golf game. I think it's neat. But most of all, and as an RPG fan, I can say this is a godsend. Being able to transfer your game into the controller while someone else wants to use the TV, that helps out so much. Because one of the problems of playing RPGs is you always will have someone, if you're living with a big family or with a partner, they probably want to use the TV at some stage. And some games may have save points far and near. So it's incredibly handy. So my well, hat's off to Nintendo for doing that. However, I'm not getting my hopes up too much. Because I'm still bitter towards Nintendo for the lack of RPGs, but that wasn't their fault. It was the third party developers not really um, taking to the idea of putting out RPGs for Nintendo. And it's only now that we're getting games like Xenoblade and The Last Story, um, which I'm thankful for, but they were kind of needed years ago to draw in the RPG community. And speaking of those games, they didn't get any mention at this year's E3, but I do did find out that they are definitely coming out to the PAL regions, which I'm very excited about. I'm getting them both as soon as I'm able to, because I really want to play them. And lastly, Atlas was there, and they showed off Catherine, and Catherine's not really an RPG, I found out, which is kind of sad, but... It's still a great game. I don't know if I'm going to pay full price for it. I'm going to wait till it drops, probably to half price. I like some of the ideas they've used for the game, which is pretty cool. I won't go into them because I don't want to spoil anything, but I think it's really cool. Uh, they're also going to bring out Shin Megami Tensei Devil Survivor Overclock, which is a remake of Devil Survivor on the DS. And they're also going to bring out Devil Survivor 2 for the DS, and that looks pretty cool. I still haven't played the Devil Survivor games yet. I should take the time to finally get into them. And of course, I've already mentioned this, but they're working on Persona 2 Innocent Sin, which is awesome. I'm actually looking forward to that more than anything that Atlas is making. So that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, when it comes to Japanese RPGs and E3, I'm kind of more leaning towards... Tokyo Game Show. I usually wait for that if I want to find out about Japanese-made games. Um, 
But back in the day, there was a time where they would showcase a lot of Japanese RPGs at E3, and that's why I always look forward to it. But it's kind of moved towards Tokyo Game Show, which is kind of right. But I, I always look forward to the Tokyo Game Show more than E3. But I still love E3. Um, had a good time this week. I intend to get online during the weekend and talk to as many people as I can about it. So that's pretty much it guys. I'm kind of anxious to get back to playing the game. I'm enjoying it immensely. I'm hoping you're enjoying whatever you're playing. Till next time.